A very good afternoon and warm welcome to panel sessions track two by Professor G.V. Sri Kumar. Professor Sri Kumar is a well known typographer and a senior faculty at IDC School of Design, IIT Bombay. He has an MDes in Visual Communication from Industrial Design Center, IIT Bombay, and BFA in Applied Arts from Faculty of Fine Arts, MS University, Parodra. His fields of expertise are visual design, typography, publication design, magazine design, and information graphic. The subjects taught by him are typography, information graphic, calligraphy, representational techniques, visual design, media technology, anatomy and life design, publication design, and computer aided design. Before IDC, he worked with various publishing houses, including Times and Chasubhai Media. Outlook and Indian Express. We request all participants to mute your mics during the workshop and turn it on only when you would like to interact. Thank you and over to you, Professor. Thank you, Sreya, for your wonderful introduction. I have prepared an introduction uh, lecture to all of, for all of you uh, to give you the context of this workshop. Uh, and in which I was planning to explain certain things about uh, visual communication and storytelling and typography. Uh, it was planned for students, com student community. So the working professionals here might find it maybe repetitive or uh, a bit problematic. I mean, you might have heard it before. So uh, I'd like you to bear with me on that because I thought that there are certain things I have to explain before we get into storytelling and narrative. I try to make it as uh, compact as possible and I'll explain a story. As you know, many of you must, might be aware that a uh, lot of designers from the 50s to 60s onwards tried to do experiments with typography and concept of word as image came into a picture that uh, there are a lot of experiments where only with letter forms can we communicate a concept or a emotion or a story. So a lot of experiments have done in the area of concrete poetry and expressive typography. And uh, many uh, typographers are working on the area of storytelling through typography. So this, uh, workshop is an attempt at exploring the possibilities of typography as a tool for storytelling and narration. So I will give a brief uh, talk on some of the concepts which I am trying to uh, say, and then we will uh, move on to, I will explain a story. And <clears throat> I will give my email ID here in the chat box so that as and when you finish or whatever you want to discuss with me, you can discuss or, or you can use a chat box also to discuss. But at the end of the workshop, I request all of you to email your work to me so that I can get a look, have a look at all the works done by the in the workshop. If, if anybody has a question, feel free to unmute and you can ask. workshop track is storytelling and visual narrative through experimental typography. So I will just take you through a brief understanding of content and form, which is very important for the work which we are going to do today. So I'm going to tell you a story. So that story becomes the content of what we are going to do today. And all, all designers here, what you are I am expecting you to do is to give form to the story which I am going to tell you. So there is there are two things. One is content and there is form. And the story is the same, but all of you will be giving a different kind of visual form to it. So there is an author, there is a designer. And our, most of the times our job is to give form to a content given by an author. So. As a metaphor, I would like to take your attention to 
the concept of ice, water, steam, cloud, rain. So if you look carefully, all of them are different manifestations of the same H2O. Only the form has changed. So we look at the very important contribution of Indian philosophy to the world is that uh, form emerges from content. This is when very, I personally feel it's a very important lesson for all communication designers. So if you look at an example of a poem, uh, somebody wrote a poem on a sheet of paper and later made, uh, typed it out and, and sent it in a WhatsApp message, or it became a Facebook post. Then this poetry is published in a magazine. Some filmmaker saw that, took it as a song, composed it. Then original song was sung by professional singers, recorded. Then the song was pixelized in a film. And later you go and see a movie, you see a song sequence based on a poem which was written, actually started with an idea in the mind where it was formless. Then the poet wrote it on a scribble on a sheet of paper. So you can see in this slide, different forms of the same content. And I would like to take your attention to one term called semantics, which is very important in the activity which we are going to do today. So semantics is a study of relationship between words and their meanings in the literature sense. But in our profession, for a visual designer, it is a study of relationship between visuals and their meanings. So when you do experimental typography and you try to do a storytelling, if you rotate one word, there is a meaning attached to it. If you remove, if you move, uh, change the position of one word, Oh, sorry, if you change the position of just one letter, then that also creates a change in the meaning. So I would like all of you to be aware of the concept that there is a relationship between what we do and the meaning it creates on the viewer. So for a graphic designer, many aspects can impact the way a reader perceives a visual, typography, composition, alignment, Position, spacing, color, hierarchy, order, all these things can contribute to the harmony of communication between the reader and the designer. I will skip all the things here. I'll just show you some examples of expressive typography through this kind of devices. So here, just by rotating one word, the designer is trying to communicate the meaning of the word to us. Here again, by changing the orientation of one letter in a word, there is a meaning conveyed to us. Changing the size and weight, changing the position of one letter in a word can also contribute a lot to expressing the meaning of it. then we can play around with the thickness, the weight axis of a font. We can play around with positioning of these things in a relative frame. And we can play around with spacing in relation to meaning of a word. And sometimes a missing letter in a word can have an impact on the meaning of it. So I will now come to the story, which I would like to tell you. It is an Arab and the camel story. So an Arab was traveling with his camel. On cold night, the Arab was sleeping inside his tent in the desert, while the camel slept outside. At midnight, the camel woke up the Arab and requested to allow him to put his head inside the tent as it was very cold and uncomfortable outside. The Arab felt sympathy for the camel and allowed him to put his head inside the tent. After a while, the camel asked if he can put his neck also inside the tent. Out of his compassion, Arab agreed and gave some more space to the camel. 
soon after the camel requested to allow him to put his legs also inside the tent now the entire body of the camel was inside the tent since the tent was small the arab was pushed out of the tent and had to sleep outside in the severe cold so there are a lot of meaning and lot of moral a lot of things in the story and now today uh, this story has a lot of different uh, uh, interpretations i always tell my students whatsapp instagram netflix amazon prime and uh, hotstar and all these things uh, signal and telegram youtube all these things are like the arab and the camel story whatsapp is the head of the camel netflix forms the uh, neck instagram becomes the body and the hand and legs and all. so in 24 hours if 24 hours we have to one day is the tent all these things parts of the camel come and fill it up and uh, many students find it difficult to spend enough time on their studies and work because of this so the task is narrate the story through typographical expressions explore various typographic parameters please avoid illustrations or photographs of the camel and the tent because this entire workshop is aimed at encouraging all of you to narrate the story through typography you are free to select whatever font you like whatever colors you like experiment with orientation size spacing alignments weight width rotation gray levels special characters textures overlaps whatever you feel like i would like all of you to use a square format and uh, you can make a pdf file and send it so i will post the uh, email id also here and you can use a chat box to chat with me whenever you want till 3:30 so the idea is that try to create that feeling of congestion and you know how the camel enters and uh, the arab is forced out of whatever uh, method you like to do and anybody wants to have any discussion with me are most welcome to discuss anything you need here is my email address you can write to me after the workshop you can send all your work to me for your value whatever feedback or comments you want you can uh, get in touch with me in instagram facebook twitter and you can see my blog also and you are most welcome to write to me any time you you like to so i would like to conclude here and uh, i will take questions now feel free to ask questions and you can start your work and whenever you need any thing to discuss you can use the chat box okay soumya i will just uh, explain that to you so that meditate example was done actually it was done by me as an experiment and i posted it in facebook so there are many philosophies of meditation and one of them there are hundreds of them thousands of them so one of them says that during meditation you lose yourself in that 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 i is not there i am not there at all every human being we have a concept of who am i so that swam that ahankar no that i is no longer there when you meditate so i was trying to portray that by removing that i from the word meditate and many spiritual organization used it many places and there is a joke also that two three places uh, people used it in a t-shirt and whenever this t-shirt was printed i got called from the printer asking sir you i heard you designed it is it is okay or is there is some mistake that the i has fallen off somewhere so that is a joke about it but this was the concept behind that expressive typography i had done 
Soumya, uh, can you hear me? And yes, sir. That's a really great insight. I understood now. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, I have posted the story in your chat box. All of you will get access. You can read the story uh, in this. And those uh, who are our students here, next time when you use Instagram, WhatsApp, <laughs> Facebook every day, remember that 10 times you use Instagram for six minutes, it is going to be an hour. Yeah, Gargi, yeah, you can ask. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for that presentation. I enjoyed it very much. And uh, sir, first of all, the meditation thing that you were just saying, I wanted to say uh, that it can also be seen from this point of view that uh, a lot of people do meditation when they actually feel like they are losing themselves, right? To find their focus back, find out who they are. So finding yeah. the I in meditation, it can be also seen from that point of view. And also mm -hmm. that uh, folk, like when you're looking at that word, your instant focus goes on the fact that the I is missing. Yeah. So you lose the rest of the things and you just look at only that part that I am missing, basically. Yes. Yeah. So, so that there, was can be, there can be so many interpretations. So... I have done a lot of work in that playing around with that I also. Sorry, that, right. that you know, the dot above I. So when you right. do meditate, if you write in lowercase, mm -hmm. so there is a circular dot, you know, it is, it is called title in typography. Okay. So that dot on top of I. Right. So I have done that transforming that dot from black to, you know, slowly changing to white. Okay, okay. Okay. And uh, once uh, there was an installation uh, I did with one professor in the US. So there what we did is you look at it for some time in a frame, total black. Mm -hmm. And you look at the word meditation is totally written in white. And so you look at it for some time, it slowly changes, fades into black. Okay. Okay. So it was a three minute video. But the, the interesting thing which came out of it is those three minutes you are actually meditating. <laughs> because yes, true. you are looking what is going to happen now. So you suddenly see, you know, I is about like melting or something happening. And the, uh, the straight I suddenly started becoming a uh, curve, things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, 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 it uh, ignites some curiosity in the viewer. But then the subconsciously, those three minutes, no other thought comes to your mind. Right. So that became a very interesting uh, video experiment we did. So it usually happens like that, right? Like when yeah. you're looking at new information and the brain is not sure what to process out of it, it just yeah. focuses entirely only on that information, right? Yeah. I will yeah. appreciate if you can switch on your video because yes, yes, sir. I feel yes. very odd talking to one blank. Of course, of course, I understand. Okay. So yes. the thing is, um, there are a lot of activities where actually you subconsciously you are meditating. For example, in calligraphy. You know, I always believed that I asked many people also. So the moment you dip a pen, uh, uh, no, brush, a flat brush or a calligraphy pen in ink, from that moment, that Till you finish a stroke, mm -hmm. there is nothing else in your mind. Right. Your Even mind, during painting, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yes, 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 of course. Yeah, it's a point anything, of... Most of the art activities, Right. that yeah. much time is actually, it is absolute bliss. Right. right. Then you don't have to go for a course to learn meditation. So yes. I have also a theory that if you look at all the senior meditation, Calligraphers, you know, like Narayana Bhattadiri and Achyut Pala, who's taking a work, both of them are taking workshops. If you look carefully, their eyes have a very different glint. That is because of that. Okay, okay, okay. And sir, I wanted to ask you one more thing. Uh, like you mentioned the Instagram, Facebook uh, story, right? So uh, now, 
what i was assessing that situation myself as well because we our generation is very involved in that so what i thought is ki uh, don't you think this is a, it's a side effect of our design education system only in a way like for example uh, when we are bringing out interaction designers right like people who are designing these apps and all of those things now these apps are designed from a point of view that you want to retain your customer for the longest time possible hai na so when you are communicating that to your student like after that it becomes a judgment call right to what point i want to exploit uh, uh, maybe a consumer on the platform so don't you think it's actually a by uh, default a product of our education system itself yeah it is a very big a very good point it is a it is a contradiction it right, is exactly school produces interaction designers and we teach them the app you make should be so engaging that yes. the, Yeah, person yeah. should be yes it is there but the thing is you know imagine you are going on a trek okay so there are a lot of these leeches which get into your leg and they start uh, drinking your blood and you will come to know after a few hours when that leech become very big and mm-hmm. yeah? so it is their karma the leeches or scorpion all this thing they are they are created with a karma that right. jaake iska khoon piyo hmm 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 but it is your job as a person who's checking to avoid them and be safe so it comes down to the consumers basically at the end it of the is day. both of these things will happen for example an apple the moment if you buy an ipad for example all those visual grammar everything is so engaging you don't feel like putting it down yes 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 Yes. but that doesn't mean that uh, you know you are a student you need to listen to your lectures you need to do your assignments properly and learn from it so, so we are going through a very very tough time yes as in design right i have been thinking about design, not only as a student the teachers also any human being mm-hmm. we are bombarded with information, information. All, of us, all of us are suffering from information overload right right absolutely so at night uh, my wife taught me this that at night you can check on a phone and an ipad how much time you spend on what app and all mm-hmm. so i am deliberately trying to reduce it now because I, before i sleep when i check that i feel terrible oh my god i have spent one hour checking things in whatsapp or you know one hour on instagram because time is very valuable so that right. is i realized that this uh, story of arab and the camel has a lot of relevance in our life today yes in lot of scenarios yes so not yes. only you and other, all generations all age groups are going through this but sir uh, see like at the end of the day um, the designers who are designing these apps they are also consumers of those apps right so uh, isn't it like a uh, i mean a point of dilemma when they are spending that much amount of time on those apps as well wouldn't it hit the person that okay i have only designed it and i have designed it in such a way that i am not being able to stop so shouldn't yes. that uh, uh, like affect the judgment in while they are making those apps so that so is the point you know so then that is why i talk about the emotional thinking and the logical thinking right. so uh, you are a student you need to make a presentation on some topic tomorrow morning mm-hmm. so when the jury is listening to your talk they don't care whether you spend 3 hours on instagram or 2 hours just absolutely so what happens is as human beings all of us are faced with this diabetes we are always you know bombarded with two different thoughts one is emotional one is logical logical So emotional says instagram you know that particular account i want to check again what happens in that the logical brain says tomorrow morning 9 o'clock you have an assignment submission yeah yeah so this is a big problem and the only way or i am doing the study on that for quite some time the only solution i have found is zoom out a bit and look at what are the thoughts which are conflicting in my mind and look at which one is emotional which one is logical and give a priority and decide which one 
sometimes an emotional angle also is needed i am not yes. saying it is not needed but most of the time we give in to the emotional urge rather than the logical yes. when you prepare for an exam yes. whatever happens that exam is going to start on that day at that time so that is the problem i am doing a lot of study on this what problems are faced by students so in 90% of the juries the student says that i didn't get enough time this is a problem with that because of the conflict we we are not trained to zoom out look at emotional angle and the logical angle and then decide how to go about it somebody asked about frames any number of frames you like but rough no not like 100 frames but manageable amount of pages in a pdf gargi did i answer your questions yes sir yes sir you did i had just one more thing to ask you sir sir do you think uh, like i mean if you really imagine every day uh, whatever you do in a day whatever product you use in a day has been designed by some designer at some point of time right so in today's world um, consumerism has gotten to a whole another level right like from the past so do you really think we need so many products that we are designing so many products do you really need do you think we really need them in our everyday life i mean i feel like we have gotten on a roll now and we're just going on producing 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 without taking a taking a step back and realizing if we are actually creating valuable products or we are asking people to uh, just spend money what See, do you think uh, so there are two things in life one is some certain things which you don't have any control so you have to accept them another is there are some things which are in your control there are only 24 hours a day that is not in your control you have to accept it like that this products are going to emerge by hundreds every day every day 30000 apps are being released that is going to only increase we have to live with it i don't have any control over it i don't have any choice i am not in a position of power to control it so i have to decide my priorities on how to plan to use 24 hours a day and do it so i try to think that these are things which are not in my control so i don't care whether a new app has come for photo editing which is the 19999th app in the app. world because i have put this things that okay one hour every day i have to prepare a new lecture for my students one hour a day i have to spend with my students on evaluate you know, giving feedback on their work they learn a lot from it so two hours every week i spend on stress management problem solving for my students so whatever happens in one week i have to spend two hours so like that so i try to consume these things in very edited manner uh, that i spend only half an hour a day on instagram i spend less than 10 minutes on facebook like that but sir i mean uh, see of course i get it from a matlab a single point consumer point of view i get it from that but i mean if i'm speaking from the point of view from of the designers uh, don't you think they the, that so much production at the end of the day is leading to that much increase in waste i mean if i'm talking about physical products right so that much uh, increase in waste and that is eventually in the long term harming us only with our climate change and environmental issues and everything yes of course so, I, i agree so, with that yeah hena so i mean what i mean don't you think it has already gotten too late like now we should like make more mindful products is what i'm saying like produce only how much you need and not keep going on because this is i mean how else do we combat climate change and environmental issues and all of those things we are we can't just that keep is, talking now that is you are talking about an idealistic situation so i agree with you but both of us will land up in 0.3% of the world's population who thinks so right yeah okay so the plastic products will continue making um, falling uh, of the production line all those things so actually there is a different topic we can discuss in detail later yeah okay sir so you are sure. more welcome to write to me and i am 
actually uh, it is a very good point maybe two of us can have a discussion with my student so i was i was just going to suggest that i was not sure if you were will be up for it but i am definitely I am going up to for it. Yeah, yes yes definitely i'm going to reach yeah, up yeah monday tuesday i'm having a type of typography class okay. you can i can send you the link and you can meet the students and we can all sit together i mean absolutely absolutely can, yeah. yes yes definitely i mean thank you so much sir thank Welcome. you Tanushree Devraj has asked a very important question, sir. How important is legibility of the text in this context of narrating a story through typography? So my idea is that uh, there are eighty-three participants. The all of us should be able to read your your output, and we should be able to understand and enjoy the story which you are narrating to me. For that, of course, legibility is. Important yes. Any number of frames fixed? No, you can do whatever you feel like. Would you please ex explain the exercise again? You can have. Uh, I am asking you to do a typographical narration of the story given to you, whichever way you feel like. Should it be just one representation of the story? No, you can have as many as you like. What is the USB operation process of interaction design versus the still communication design? I am not qualified to answer that. I am not a computer freak about USB operation process, so I am not able to answer that. Would AI take over design in upcoming issue times virtually? Then designers working manually. Of work from home process that pandemic has landed up. AI taking over design is a fantasy going on for the last 25, 30 years. That uh, that dream is there. That you know, I want to design a new logo for Lens. Type in one site and it will come with some new logo for that. Personally, I don't believe in that. I don't. I'm a creative design process is something. It is a personal opinion only a human being can do. So I am not a subscriber to that. I might be wrong. Soumya, yeah, please ask your question. Uh, so actually, I had a doubt. Uh, yeah. Like uh, the logo for the typo day, it's very interesting. So me and my friends, we were just discussing that. Uh, where is the why in that? Like, is it like rotated or is it in the negative space? So the doubt that all of us had is that do you think like that logo since it's the winning design so mm. it's good design based on whether everyone understands it and it's very clear and legibility as someone pointed out or is it to create a kind of intrigue or a balance of so why is already there i can see the why why you're saying why cannot be seen uh, okay, the first one first one the uh. typo day yeah Okay, 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 okay. So it is debatable actually because uh, see this is open to interpretation. Is the bird trying to uh, replace the letter Y, or is it the white Y space uh, white space uh, replacing the letter Y? So my understanding was that it was a typo, and that's why it is the why is not there. Maybe I don't know. I am. I was not part of this uh, logo selection process. Many people asked me that. This year I was not involved. So personally, I am not very much in favor of something which does not communicate the all the letter forms clearly, but. I also believe that uh, designers need to be naughty and creative and all that. So it is very debatable that this logo uh, falls into the sea. Uh, every designer has their own. So I believe uh, there is a very famous quote by a very great typography teacher called Emil Roder. Emil Roder said, the job of type, the function of typography, is to convey information in writing. No philosophy or argument can 
absorb you from this responsibility. So I belong to that school. So that school of thought will not say that what this logo is a great logo. So it, uh, so I can't comment on that. Uh, that negative space makes sense and not. For me, if I am designing, I will make sure that if one person looks at it for five seconds, he should be able to read. But there are a lot of other people who believe that the element of surprise and you know the element of the chance of all of us going to that site and looking again and thinking over this makes sense. I don't know. Personally, I don't believe. You know, there are some cartoonists, if you look at British cartoonists in the 70s and 80s. There are a lot of cartoonists who quoted Shakespeare and all that in their caption. And there is a thing that you need to find out what this uh, quote means and then laugh about it. So according to me, that cartoon doesn't make any sense if all of us don't understand if we cannot laugh over it. So maybe different viewpoints can coexist. There are some logos where you might like, I might not, I like. So it is a very subjective thing. But it is a very important question you have asked. But when you do a story narrative of this particular story which I gave you, I will prefer if it can be read comfortably by all of us. The Russian design studio has developed an AI designer for over a year, has been passing it off as a human. To date, the network has been used successfully in over 20 of the studio's commercial projects. See, I heard about it. That is why I told you. It is debatable and it is open for dialogue that we cannot have a blanket answer to that question. Maybe, who knows that in a year or two, you will have an AI which can design things for you. So you just give the story, it will make a lot of iterations on how creatively you can have a typographical interpretation of that story. So did I answer your question, Tadagat Bishwas? Yes, yes. I asked about the exercise. Thank you. Yeah. So all of you, if you're clear, you can start with your work. You can do hand-drawn or you can use computers and whatever. And you can, uh, you have my email ID. If you want, I can write it again in the chat box. Feel free to write to me whenever you need. Okay, let me share some of the work done by the participants today. So this is done by Kirtana. Actually, this is the first, first uh, slide, first page, then it goes like this. Very interesting the way the camel enters the tent and you know, the shivering cold and all very interesting work. Kirtana. This Thank is you. done by Tanusri. Tanusri has done a very, very interesting work. You really, when you move the pages, you really feel there is an animation going on. Very well done. This is done by Sharvari. This is done by Bharat. So very interesting and interesting typography, the good sense of font selection, everything is very, you know, considering the time. This is done by Saumya. And there are two more, which I'll show you in their image files. This is done by Aditi. 
it has created that feeling of shiver and in a cold very cold outside the tent and uh, i have one more done by uh, alf alfi so it shows the forced movement of the camel outside so please uh, send all of you take your own time and the next few days i expect all of you to send me a pdf file of whatever you have done and explore the fonts i have sent in there is this fonts.google.com where you can download very good fonts in open source platform anybody has any other question feel free to ask we are the last 5 minutes of the workshop shweta we were doing an experimental typographic narration of a story uh i see uh did anybody sort of show their work i would yeah, be yeah 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 there yeah. are so for your benefit i just showed it to everyone but i'll show it again right thank you so this one is by kirtan so actually it starts from here this is the first slide we should uh, you know so it, she tries to you know give the feeling of the cold desert mm -hmm. and camel is outside the tent and arab is, is it, it about the camel story that uh, you had shared <laughs> ah during yeah. your orientation yes. yes same same yeah so this is how it moves So slowly the arab is uh, out of the tent and you can see the shivering feel it's very interesting work kirtana you are a student or a designer or a professor or what so i am a student also a student of kumkum oh you are classmates huh? no no i am a masters level student oh somya is a ug student yes unfortunately we haven't met our own uh, college mates because of the pandemic because i started my course entirely online i know i know same problem is with my students also the juniors have never met the seniors yeah <laughs> this is done by tanushri this is done by sorry it's very interesting uh, it is looks like an animation you know camel comes and forces the air about very interesting is it hobo you have used hobo for ara and balu uh, modak for modak. camel yes sir and arab is in hobo arab is in Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. There's a font called Hobo. I think it is that. H O B O. Okay, this is done by. Yes, Sharv. it's Hobo only. Yeah, Sharvari has done this very. I found it very interesting, the way the Arab is standing now. This is also a very interesting thing. and uh, this is done by bharat and uh, i found this uh, so very interesting because the way the arab you know the typography is used is very interesting to create a cultural context through typography and the way camel has thrown him out of the tent very interesting thank you sir sir i sent you an email who is that elias okay okay so i'll just show you what two files which i got now i don't know who sent it sir uh, it is done by me srushti here okay the institute is named after you where, where do you do 
You're a student. So, I am a student. Yeah, sir. I am doing applied arts from Sofia Polytechnic. But you should be doing from Srishti. No, sorry, sir. Because the name is there, you should be joining <laughs> Srishti College of Art. No, sir. It's it's not in Mumbai, so I had to do from. Oh, okay. Who has done this? Yes, sir. Who is that? Apurva. Ah, Apurva. Okay, very nice. Using the letters, you are doing a camel. Yes. But I wanted you to do a typographical composition like others did. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is also fine, but I'll prefer the other one. Srishti, you have only one image? Yes, sir. Okay. That's not a problem. So I will. Okay, Srishti, I will suggest you make more frames and then make it into a you know five pager or a six pager. Yes, sir. I'll definitely do that. You are based out of Mumbai? Yes, sir. Once I have come to give a lecture there in Sofia. Uh, sir, we have uh, Kalpesh, sir. Uh, like he is also taking a workshop. Ah, he is a friend of mine. Please convey my pranam to him. Sure, sir. He is a big calligraphy enthusiast. Yes. Yeah. Anybody has any question? And otherwise, we can all wind up. Sreya? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Professor, for the interesting workshop and answering all the questions from the participants. Uh, we would also like to thank the participants for being a part of the workshop and sharing such interesting typographic work. Um, you can now move to the next uh, session. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a great day.